I decided to waste some of my life and watch the live stream that is pertaining to the Age of War Chapter 2. So maybe you haven't or maybe you have watched it. Maybe you're curious of my opinion or maybe you're curious what other people think about this update. Either way, I wasted some of my life and watched it and I actually took the time to take some clips out of it. And I'll give some context to why I took some of these clips out, of course. Of course, I'm going to be focused more towards the PvP changes. There are some PvE things and then other things that I thought were funny in the live stream that I thought I would include. So, uh, welcome back for another episode from a series that, you know, I think is pretty popular on my channel. And it's been a while since I've done one of these. And I feel like this is a good video to do that. I do have some more lined up, which are pertaining to other things, but uh, we'll have to wait for those videos. But anyways, we'll let the first clip play out. Just to show off some of the new uh, goodies that are coming with the update. Uh, so we have a full uh, new building set, uh, the uh, Stygian pyramid themed set. Uh, with foundations, pillars, um, different types of uh, like different gradient slopes. Yeah, you can see there's two slopes mm -hmm. there. Yeah, there's di yeah different different slope angles. Uh, hieroglyphic foundations as well with four different sides, uh, so that way uh, you don't get like, so you can rotate them as you'd like, so that way you don't get like repetitive. Um, you know, you, that way like your wall decorations like don't look repetitive. You can avoid that. I don't know. I thought I would include this because I just thought it was kind of funny. Like pyramids have been something that have been made in Conan for how long now? Like, seri like I, I, I get it. You guys probably don't play your own game, but from PVE to PVP, like pyramids are something people build in survival games. People build pyramids on seven days to die. It's kind of funny. You're finally just capitalizing on that, but I can see that wet towel right now and you are just wringing it dry trying to get every last dime you can out of this game before it just completely flatlines so i get it you know your business you got to make some money but uh you guys could have capitalized on that ages ago but you know I i'm glad that a big update like the chapter chapter two you know age of war air quotes age of war you know and it's all related to NPCs and don't worry, we're gonna get pyramids, a uh, pyramid build set, you know, cause people haven't been building pyramids for years now. Oh yeah, we also have elephants. Oh yeah. Uh, I, kn I know that everyone's gonna get really excited, but the elephants are not a mount, they are a follower. Um, we did have a mount lined up for this chapter, but I believe that did get pushed off to the next chapter. So unfortunately you will have to wait a bit longer for that. Uh, yep. And here are the bookshelves. Oh, 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 the we're snake! We're very excited about the snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, and yeah, these are bookshelves. Uh, they attach to the wall, but they have um, like th they cycle through a bunch of different styles, uh, which you can see like in the placement preview. Let's see if I can you have a wall, down. right? Oh, this one. No, wait, so go go uh, copy the bookshelf. Oh, I copied the wall. I'm yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then when you go to the placement preview, like you'll see, uh, it cycles. A little <laughs> having trouble getting in place right now. Anyway, so like there, there's like four different styles of the uh, bookshelf. So that way, again, like it, it will randomly like place one depending on, yeah, you know, as you place the mouse. So that way, like, again, it doesn't look repetitive. It looks like a full like library. Uh, we just want to make it look, make sure it looks good. This clip, you might be wondering, why did I leave this clip in? Well, I mean, the they're already having issues with their own building mechanics. He can't even get the bookcase to snap onto the wall properly, That now he's snapping it on half a wall. It's just, this is what I'm talking about. There's never enough time put into fixing things in this game. They're, they're more than happy to implement these new cosmetics, but they don't even work properly. And even in their own live stream, they're not working properly. You're not fooling anyone in the bottom left hand corner beta gameplay subject to change you're not fooling anyone here okay we have seen many bugs exploits and issues carry over from the beta into the live client for years now and they still have yet to be addressed you ain't fooling me uh they will try to beat down and get through the doors if there are doors that they can't pass through but they're kind of trying to find a path through through doorways to get to where they need to get to and now they're going to take a few whacks at the door and try to knock the door down to get through it. 
Yeah, some folks in chat are noting the door went down pretty fast. Oh, yes. the, the demolishers are no joke. Like they are they are like basically like melee siege specials with a bunch of extra health. So like they're a little slower once they have the like their battering ram out, but like they can knock down tier one foundations and tier one stuff like within like two hits. What they want is your treasure, and they'll take the quickest path to your treasure. So like if you don't have doors, they'll just go through the doorways and try to make a beeline towards your coffer, basically, to then steal treasure and then try to uh, loot it and then walk back uh, to the forward operating base here with your loot. And then the um, the camps themselves are built dynamically based on your base location, or you know, more accurately, your coffer location, I guess. Mm -hmm. So snow, uh, I've heard, you know, stuff like the aqueducts, for example, or weird no-build areas could cause things. So we just want to make sure uh, that stuff's all working. So please let us know. But otherwise, yeah, it, it's all dynamic. Yeah, there's, there's no current banner cap, but there is an exclusion radius on them, similar to like a religious altar. So you can't put too many of them too close together. I compiled these together because the whole thing is kind of mind boggling. The idea of the fob that the enemy makes, the purge makes, is supposed to be closer to the coffer, okay? But they only want to go through doors. It's a purge. You should have the purge just demolishing walls and everything in its way to get to that coffer. That should be how the purge works. I guess they still haven't been able to figure out proper pathing for the AI because even in the clip, you could see them just running in a straight line to the doors. I just, it blew my mind because the coffer is right there. The fob is closer to the coffer, but they're going to go through the doors. The reason this really, you know, stuck out to me was because in the second part, when the, they spawn in wave 10, the fob is close to the coffer, but the doors are all the way on the other side of the base. So there's just this huge line of thralls. Like if people that are actually going to participate in this are enjoying it for the immersive aspect of it, it's not very immersive seeing, uh, you know, an army of thralls running in a straight line. That's not usually how armies work. Um, maybe we should get them a history book, you know, some documentaries on battle formations and stuff like that. Honestly, it just, this just update just looks poor. It looks like poor quality. And that's my opinion. You don't have to agree. I'm just saying it's called the age of war. So where's the war? They're running in a straight line to their death. Like, uh, it's like, do they think about these things? And because this is a level two, or yeah, level two purge, threat level two, and our, our team here is pretty geared up. Hold on, we got to pause it right here. You see how fast that door went? It's kind of funny. Like, like he, he, it almost looked like he was a little surprised how fast that door went. You can do the purge anywhere now. There's no restriction. It's wherever you want it to be. Uh, and yeah, the purge doesn't like elevators. You have to have a grounded base. Like none of your like crazy sky bases will uh, be purgeable. Wait a minute. Hold up. What do you wait? Sky bases? Are you is Fun Cobb? Wait a minute. Are you guys actually acknowledging sky bases, or are you confused with pillar bases? Because you just told me that I could build anywhere and I can be purged, and now you're telling me I can't build anywhere and be purged. And then you said sky bases. Uh, I've never heard pillar bases considered sky bases, and I would assume people that you know work on the game. <laughs> they would know what a sky base is, right? Um, I would really like a follow up on this. The first was just that loot's kind of boring. Like when we go into camps and loot the chests in there, we're getting like a lot of plant fiber and you know, like really boring like base stone materials that aren't very helpful. From like high level, like I go to the volcano. Yeah, and it's berries. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. why do I need this? Yeah, so that was an issue. Um, it doesn't always make sense either. Like why does a Sumerian drop a bone club? Here's a little loot preview as well. Some of the stuff that's in here. And we'll talk more about the loot a little bit later as well. But we've done a really big r uh, update to the distribution of loot. So the things that you find are more appropriate for the things that you're defeating or interacting with or looting. It's typically more more aimed at their culture or um, the equipment that they actually have on, things like that. The, the loot in the end here is kind of intended to help you kind of try to recover a little bit from any damage that might have been done. It might have some food in it for you to be able to feed your thralls. 
So you've got some some easier upkeep on them. Um, it has some equipment. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff that you can get just from the purge that will help you keep purging again. There's a lot to dissect right here, but first things first, they state that loot is boring. Loot in most chests is quite boring. Maybe if you're just starting out, you hit certain chests to get some steel, stuff like that. But you know, the whole traders at the Spire have made that much more. It's just a simple process now. And I found this fascinating because they said the loot at the end of the purge and i know this one was a level two they didn't really show the loot for the tier 10 i'm gonna assume it's god tier right it's gotta be because uh they, they're obviously aware how much food thralls eat when they take damage and uh, how much building pieces get destroyed how much those cost uh you know all that stuff i'm sure you know they're aware of those costs right well from that screenshot right there i don't uh I don't see it. Uh, uh, I, I could care less about the loot changes that they're making. I just thought it was kind of silly that the whole reason of the end, the loot at the end of the purge is to help you recover. What? How am I going to recover with that stuff if a purge destroyed half your base? What? I, you guys don't even know what your own items cost in your game. I get it. You don't want to give people tons of good loot. But you do want to give people loot because you say the loot's boring and you want people to be able to do purges back to back to get better loot. And I, I'm confused. There's always conflicting things from Funcom. Always. It's like loot's boring. We want to make loot better. But that preview, I know it was tier two. Loot still looked boring. Like when he opened that chest, I didn't jump out of my seat and be like, that is some good loot. And any anyone who actually plays this game and knows this game well enough is not going to be like, oh yeah, that's some good loot. We've actually made an entirely new trade system for this as well. So this character is a mercenary. They have resources that you can use to fuel your war machine more. So you can take some of that gold you had, bring it back to this character and... Okay, wait a minute. I, I'm sure these prices are gonna be adjusted correct because i saw five gold coins can get me a crate of explosives all the hardened steel arrows explosive a hundred explosive arrows for five gold coins what what are you what fake i mean you guys just don't care about official pvp servers i'm so thankful i'm not on official anymore uh, i'm good with that i mean i i guess but five coins Five coins, I, getting five coins is so simple in comparison to taking the time to get all the materials to get a hundred explosive arrows. There, I'm, I'm just going to say it's safe to assume these costs will be modified when it comes out. And when you place one of these banners down, it will give you additional fighters that will fight until they run out of health or until some uh, period of time. I yeah, see, I see chat picking Thrallers, up on that one. Yeah. yeah, they they uh, they will not the thrall cap. I believe that you should be able to just spawn them no matter what. So the reason I brought this up is those banners you previously saw. Obviously, when he placed one down, you know it could spawn in fighters, different types of things, thralls that are going to help you, similar to like what zombies do. But you saw how cheap those things were. I just feel like there's going to be bugs and issues with this. I did not get to see how much health they had from the live stream. Um, I have not hopped on to the beta to actually look into things myself yet, but I just feel personally from someone who's played only PVP, uh, I could see issues with this already. Uh, and I'm very curious to see how that will play out. I'm sure you are too. I guess the commander probably can't be thralled. I think that would be the only restriction. Uh, that character, that boss character at the end. Uh, we've got a guy going for the door here. Ooh, show off the, the, the cauldron. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's new cauldrons. So here, I guess we have fire cauldrons here. We have new fire and oil cauldrons. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to hit because our crosshair is turned off. No, you can go zoom go. in if you want to, I guess, and try. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if you know me, you know why I clipped this one for the comedy of it. He's very excited about those siege cauldrons. Something I've never used, something I've never really seen people use. The only people that I have seen use them on PvP are 
uh, troll methods or literally people that think they're going to actually do something and they don't do anything. They didn't even do, they didn't even do anything right there. Uh, but the beginning, the first part of the clip where he said that the commander, the commander is what spawns at the end of the purge. He's uh, uh, the boss, you know, a two skull. He said he's probably not going to be able to be knocked out. What do you mean probably? For the most time that I've played Conan, most bosses that have skulls above their head are not able to be knocked out. And you made the purge. You should know if he's able to be knocked out. What do you mean probably? Are you trying to tell me that I'm going to be able to knock out some of these bosses? Like I was able to knock out the arena champion at one point. Stuff like that. Good stuff. All right. Uh, some stuff right now is getting stuck in walls like this. Like yeah, these, yeah. Uh, they get knocked into it, and then they fail to act. So you'd have to open the doors or have the doors destroyed for him to be able to go further. Obviously, I had to put this clip in because right here, the purge is already glitching out. Conan's full of bugs and glitches, and it's like in the middle of the stream, he even addresses it. The thrall is stuck in the door. It's like, this is your live stream showcasing it. And you're already showcasing bugs like these bugs are already happening long gone are the days when we actually got like polished content and we were just excited for it instead we get this sort of content these days from developers but don't worry they have spent plenty of time on the battle pass and cosmetics for you to spend your hard-earned money on but don't worry the game mechanics itself they're barely gonna work and the AI is still going to be as stupid as ever. What's the benefit of a higher level purge? Well, A, it's the challenge. Like some people want to play a game for the challenge. And so uh, it's just it's just more dudes that are harder to fight. And so if you want to like really test your metal uh, or if you have like really good gear or some really good thralls, you just want to like hack and slash and spill some blood. That's the point. Also, the rewards are better. Yep. I feel after that statement, it's safe to assume you're not actually a gamer. I'm pretty sure if someone wants a challenge, they'll go play games like Dark Souls or something like that. Conan is not a challenge. If you're brand new to Conan, if you've never played Conan, it might seem a little overwhelming. But once you learn a few of the ropes, it's actually the, one of the easiest survival games out there. It's almost borderline not a survival game with how easy it actually is. Yeah, so these demolishers are, they won't steal loot. Like I said, the demolishers will just start to try to destroy stuff once they get there. Um, so, you know, if a normal guy gets through, he'll pick up the treasure and take it away, but the demolishers are just going to try to smash stuff. Wack had asked in chat uh, if what happens if they destroy the coffer. It will cause the purge to end. So we're going to be trying to avoid it, you know, try to make sure they don't destroy it. But you can see, like, in this case, they destroyed the foundation that it was sitting on. So <laughs> in about in about 30 seconds or so, it'll actually cancel and say that they couldn't find their way to the treasure anymore or that the coffer was destroyed. So the real reason I wanted to provide clips from the live stream is because I go on rants and tangents all the time. And I think a lot of people think I'm just blowing hot air, you know, like, oh, this guy just doesn't like the game. Why does he even play it? But the message I always try to get across is that they care more about money and less about how their game runs. Why would you have NPCs that are going to destroy the coffer and stuff around the coffer? That shows the lack of ability on your department of a de as a development team that you can't properly have them as what they're supposed to do. What they should do is they should break doors down when they've broken the doors to get to the coffer, their programming should kick in that they just become fighters or maybe looters. Uh, fighters would make sense because they're bigger characters, they're, demolish they're demolishers. So then they could protect the smaller AI that's looting stuff, you know? Like this is just, this shouldn't be that hard to code if you were an experienced developer. There are other games that do more complex things with their AI. But in this situation, you want the purge to come to your base. You want the waves to keep going. But if you don't kill or stomp the demolishers, the demolishing units from getting to your coffer, they could potentially destroy it, which then will end the purge. Do you see what I'm getting at here? Can you let that sink in that this is a big update, supposed to be a big update, but you can see 
all the issues with the update already and it's going to be here on September 21st and you know all these things are not going to get sorted out. If you're new to Conan and you've been enjoying the game, I'm just telling you the sad truth. There have been bugs in the game that have existed for years and have been issues that have never been addressed, that have never been fixed, that get ignored all the time from them, that get silenced on the Funcom forums, that just get tossed out the window. And what we keep getting is updates with more bugs, more game-breaking glitches and exploits, more cosmetics and furniture and PvE related stuff and broken pay to win armor and weapons and you know you can truly see where their heart is it's not in the game it's not in the content of the game it's 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 for money it's purely for monetary gain because if you were truly passionate about the game you're working on, you would want to do these things. You wouldn't want to do just the bare minimum. You would want to go above and beyond so your game could be the best and be one of a kind. That's a good game developer though. And another thing <laughs> that we're working on is the, like, I'm sure you can figure out why I clipped that, right? I don't even have to explain that. They're always working on something, but they're never working on fixing things that already exist. I think, most players and even PVE players would appreciate the fact of them fixing their core game before adding in more stuff that could just break more of the core game that already has broken mechanics to it in the first place. Maybe a good place to start. Maybe some of those comments that you decide to ignore in chat and those posts you decide to silence on your forums, maybe you should take a minute to actually pay attention to them and listen because if you actually showed actual passion and dedication to your game and your community that plays your game more people would want to play your game and in turn you would make more money more people more money less people less money someone asked if they can emote in chat so yes they can yes <laughs> the reason i put this here is because in chat tons of people were asking serious questions i understand it's a live stream and it's a live stream focused towards this update but there are actually legitimate questions out there. What are you guys doing about cheaters? What about the fact that SIPTA has been broken and it crashes people's games, you know, like a game breaking bug like that? What about the other exploits? What about the Zendesk and people mass reporting people and people getting banned off of official servers for no reason, dev wiped with no real cause. And then when they ask, why did I get banned? You're sent some link that it's literally so vague you can't pinpoint it you never get a straight answer because funcom when they dev wipe you they just log on terminal and just type in a command and boof there goes your base you're not even going to get a reason you're just banned and with the mass reporting thing it is a real thing and it is something that people have been concerned about forever a clan can't raid you so they just start mass reporting you they might even get other people on the server to try to spoof your clan name and send in false reports of chat with your name being spoofed, stuff like that, your clan name being used on, you know, racist uh, stuff, building structure, stuff like that. They do these sorts of things to try to get people banned. And these people do actually end up getting banned over some of this silly stuff because they actually don't do their work. They don't do, they don't do their job at all very well, but they don't address these questions. Uh, once that's done, then yeah, the, the, uh, Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, what did you expect? Your thrall and Godbreak armor to not die? Like, Godbreaker armor isn't the best thrall armor out there. And uh, they were using a Berserker. Why not have some Cannibal Brutes? Those things would have demolished things. Or maybe they nerfed Cannibal Brutes in this update. Who knows? But they went with Berserker and gave him Godbreaker. I don't know. When I saw him looking at that, I was like, if I, I thought for a minute, maybe he's actually reflecting like, God, this game is trash at this point. Um, we also had an issue with legendary chest breaking progression. So if you're really, you know, you, you kill a, a world boss early on, you get that key from it and then you loot it, you get some really crazy loot that you shouldn't have at a lower level. And a little quality of life change that we made as well is that the library of isoteric, uh, artifacts and the void forge no longer give you completely random recipes they all come in order so if you're taking those um those fragments to those places to unlock those recipes 
you'll know what you're going to get if you happen to have a list of it or if your friend tells you, I got this thing when I turned in my second one, you will also get that when you turn in your second one. It, wait, hold on. How is that game breaking? Like, I'm sorry, if a player is skilled enough to kill a world boss at like level 10, 15, they deserve what's in that chest, especially if it's a legendary weapon. Like, come on now. That's just going to help them progress quicker. You want people to progress quicker. Obviously, you're concerned with the loot people are getting. You want people to have a, you know, you know, not such a grind. You don't want it to be such a grind anymore. Well, if they can get that legendary weapon, what's the big deal with that? Wait a minute. You don't want people getting legendary weapons out of a chest at a lower level, but you want to guarantee that people can get all the recipes with fragments of power without having to put effort and time into your game. Um, like, I get it. It's a quality of life thing. It's nice. I, I had hundreds of recipes from fragments. Fragments on Sipta, though, doesn't matter. You can get hundreds upon hundreds of fragments on Sipta. It's it's easy peasy. Exiled Lands fragments, uh, they take a little more time to farm than they do on Sipta. Why not just balance out Exiled Lands with the fragments you get and keep it the way it is? It's something you want to keep some kind of grind in your game, right? You know, you want to keep people playing it. That's something people can work for. People do like working for things, you, you know, uh, that's why a lot of people play these types of games. They like accumulating stuff. They like getting, you know, knowing you're going to get something is nice, but getting something you've been waiting for and trying to get is so much more rewarding. You're kind of, you do that attack and you're locked in that direction. So if you want to do an attack this way and then you want to do an attack that way, it'll, it'll, you know, instantly rotate and let you switch between attacks. But this means you have to guess the trajectory of the enemy and the timing of your attack to be able to hit them whenever they're moving and you're trying to swing at a moving target, for instance. So now I'm going to slow the server down and show you what we've done in this update. Sorry, it's very hard to read. <laughs> so now whenever you do one of these attacks, you can actually hold forward and redirect and change the direction of the attack. The point where damage starts to happen is where we cut off the ability to rotate. Um, we might run into some balance issues there where we need to tone some stuff down. Uh, we actually found that the, the undead bosses in the wine cellar were using the wrong weapon. Uh, and only when they could hit us because we added this update, like they could hit us very consistently, do we realize because they were just doing truckloads of damage <laughs> and it was like impossible yeah. to fight them. Uh, this reminds me of the controller exploit. Do, you, do any of you remember the controller exploit? Did any of you experience it or maybe even use it? You know how you could, you know, stab your pike and your pike would turn with your controller because it was an exploit with the controller. I do like this change though. I do believe you should be able to redirect your attacks, but I feel like personally, this update is going to cater more towards people who actually use controllers than mouse and keyboard because on a controller, you have, you know, a little rotary stick that you can easily manipulate. Whereas with WASD, you know, it could be a little more problematic for people to pick up on, but it's not a bad change. I'm happy that they are doing it. I'm just wondering if that controller exploit was, you know, the inspiration for this or something. It's just kind of funny to me that they're doing that. Well, as you can see already with adding in that new movement ability, it's already causing AI issues because the AI will be able to take full advantage of that as well. Oh, I just, I, I hope that carries over to you know, our thralls that we have, right? You're gonna, our thralls gonna be broken again? Is that, was that what I'm hearing? Good effect on PvP, mm -hmm. hopefully mm -hmm. in a positive way in a lot of uh, situations. Um, we've reduced the effectiveness of Steel Thude instead of being 33%, so you can only take a third of your health and damage. Uh, it's 25% now, or sorry, it was 25. Mm -hmm. Now you can die in four hits instead of three, which is backwards. Sorry, this is really hard for me to read in this <laughs> tiny window. Cur just click okay, on yeah. it. Okay, yeah, it sorry. It was 25%, so you died in four hits. Now it's 33%, so you can die in three. I honestly haven't used Steel Thude a lot. I was actually considering trying more builds with it, but, you know, now you can die quicker. 
so they're just their steel food is getting a bit of a nerf honestly it's kind of a silly thing you know it would be nice to see the attributes reworked and get rid of quick footed or whatever uh every character should be the same exact speed no perk should increase your character speed you should have just done away with that one and you know put something else into agility you know like oh i don't know i'm sure you could figure something out wink wink the duration of last stand has been reduced as well from six seconds to three i can say now uh recently with the age of war update i have I, I don't use last stand anymore i love glutton i think glutton is the most overpowered option uh last stand a lot of people in my clan still use it and have a lot of great luck with it but reducing it from six to three seconds that's that's actually really big that's a uh, it's a big jump like it doesn't seem like it because it's just seconds but that's gonna be something noticeable i'm very curious how that's going to play out bows and what this means is we can reduce arrow damage over the distance they've traveled so right now it's it's pretty uh forgiving in there like you can shoot very far with an arrow but that's a knob that we're looking to be able to turn is to make the bow effective range a bit lower because right now there is no control over it Honestly, this one doesn't really phase me either. It's also not really going to change anything. I kind of hate bows and how bows are such a meta right now because they're close range, close proximity with a bow. It's really not that hard to use. Whereas actual archers that are actually good at the game and can hit shots from a distance, this is going to affect them a bit more apparently. And uh, I guess if you were to get good with shooting a bow, even longer ranges now after this update, you'd be even more skilled, but it doesn't seem like close proximity is really going to take a major hit from this. So I'm kind of sad about that. I hate bows. Um, I hate how everyone has picked up a bow and some hardened steel arrows and thinks that they're a bow god now. Uh, throwing orbs detonate immediately now. So no matter if you use heavy or light, it will just blow up as soon as it hits the ground. I clipped this because I feel like there's going to be something very interesting with orbs, okay? The fact that they blow up instantly now when they hit the ground. I don't know. There's some scheming and plotting going on in my head with them right now because, uh, you know, they're useless. They're really trying to make the orbs useful in the game again. And, uh, you know, you're able to kind of stack orb effects with bombs to kind of get the old school style of like, you know, poison with explosives to get more damage. But now if they blow up immediately, that could change some of that. But I'm thinking more like PVP purposes. Maybe I could do some shenanigans with these. I don't know. I, I don't care. They can change orbs all they want. They really want people to use orbs. The throw on a javelin should be a lot more damaging now. Oh, great. I'm going to see people running around with javelins. Every time an update comes out, people try out things like, well, oh, remember Age of War came out and everyone was running around with the momentum and they think they're a god now because they're rolling, smacking, rolling, smacking. Hey, it's fun. Uh, this is a really big one. God bubbles are gone. Mm -hmm. No more God bubbles. Mm -hmm. If you're playing on a PvP server and you need your base to be protected, you need to be there to protect it. If you or your friends can't protect it, you, you may risk losing that base. Uh, the thrall, you know, the, the thralls that you put up, the defenses that you have is going to have to be what stops the, the base from being mm -hmm. destroyed. Um, siege damage. We took avatars and made them last 10 times longer and reduced their damage 10 times as much. So it's a lot more defensible. You know, with the removal of god bubbles, we had to also reduce the effectiveness of the gods themselves. I will truly never understand their logic. I, like I've said, they don't play their own game, so they don't know how it works. If you play on official servers and you rely on a god bubble for protection of your base, it can be quite annoying if it makes you unraidable. You know, it makes the ability to use arrows impossible. Uh, you can use a treb, sure. And, but, you know, there's you can't use a god. Once your god gets into that red bubble radius, it's not gonna it's not gonna be able to get to your base it's not gonna do any damage or anything like that but the god bubble does help smaller clans whereas larger clans if, if a 10 man shows up against you know a three man four man clan and they have experience they're gonna know what they need to do with a bubble or without a bubble it's just gonna make people getting wiped even easier 
Rats live like rats. They don't care about God bubbles, but bigger clans now are just going to be able to run amok. You know, you get 20, 30 people in an alliance, you're going to be able to wipe a server twice as fast than you were before. Also, the thing with, you know, reducing God damage, but then increasing God duration 10 times, all I can think about is Jabal Sag. I don't know if any of you have, you know, used gods or even tested gods, but you are able to deal damage to gods. And when you deal damage to them, it drains the timer on them. Well, Jabal Sag works a bit differently. You can call it a bug, an exploit, whatever you want, but he doesn't seem to take the same damage as say, you know, like a Mitra or something like that because he's flying. Something's weird with this hitbox. Even though you're hitting him directly, the damage isn't actually ticking away the time like it should. Not to mention, since they're gonna be 10 times longer, if, like I said, you're a bigger group and you can suppress a smaller group, you can just keep using God after God after God and eventually it's gonna do the same amount of damage. It's just gonna take a little bit longer, but just very odd changes. I don't play official, so it doesn't affect me. I'm free, I don't have to deal with that. If you're out there farming a bubble every day, you don't gotta worry about that anymore, but, uh. You know, just odd changes. I just don't think they care about the PvP community. I don't think they want to actually run PvP servers anymore. I think they would really like the PvP community to just play on private servers. And, you know, they could just be done with dealing with PvP because the, they show no love. They don't take the time to actually look into tickets and reports and stuff like that. They don't take the time to fix game breaking exploits, the cheaters that run rampant. They, they just don't care about that stuff. So it'd be much easier if they could just get rid of these servers and the player bases on their PVP servers and have them all go to a private server where those admins who don't work for the company, but actually enjoy the game can do their job for them and try to mitigate damages as much as possible. And we've also made trebuchets easier to build. So instead of taking like, what is it like 30 minutes or something like that right now per piece, it's like five minutes per piece and you can build uh, trebuchets as a offensive weapon a lot easier. This is actually a good change in my opinion. I think, uh, you know, trebs should be built quicker. Uh, they, they have terrible, terrible health they're so easy to take out especially with the incorporation of magic and uh the closing them in so much more difficult now i don't even know if you can do it i've done it by accident but you can't close them in like you were able to so with the use of magic explosive arrows there's no god bubbles now like taking out trebs have always been easy will still be easy but hey at least they're quicker to craft so that's nice i'm not, I'm not nothing to complain about there well, that's it. Um, honestly, you know, the one guy's always looking at chat and I know he sees all those comments out there and I get it. Some people can be quite rude. I understand. And I understand while this live stream, you know, is for Age of War and Chapter 2, people do have a lot of questions and there are a lot of questions that still need to be addressed. The, the questions about cheaters. Are you guys doing anything more to work on cheaters? Or are you just relying on battle eye and hoping battle eye keeps updating their client and banning cheaters because you guys can't be bothered. What about the report meta that runs wild on official servers, other exploits, game breaking bugs and stuff like that. Like a lot of people ask these questions in chat and a lot of them ask it in a civil way and they just get completely ignored. I think that's kind of rude. You're completely ignoring your community. I mean, Sipta has been broken for how long? They did say something about Sipta in the live stream, but I mean, you would think, you know, hey, uh, our game is basically unplayable on this map. We should fix that. That should be a priority. No, 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 no. We got to get this live stream out there and showcase that, look, elephants have saddles, but you can't ride them. We got this new bookcase that doesn't snap right. You can make your thrall emote and stuff like that. And all this good jazz It's like, yes, because that question in chat about someone asking if the new placing system for thralls allows you to set an emote on them. Yes, that is a top priority comment. 
Well, I'm done. I'm done here ranting and sharing my opinion. I would be very curious to see what your opinions are. So please drop them in the comments below. If you're not subscribed and you know, you kind of like this video, maybe you should hit that subscribe button. It's free. It helps me out just as likes do. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. And don't worry, uh, I'm going to leave you with some clips because I thought it was funny because, you know, he's always reading chat, but he's never really addressing the real elephant in the room. Get it, elephant, what I did there. I'm an idiot. So let's see here. Uh, let's see if we can get a couple couple thingies from chat really quick, a couple questions. Someone <laughs> is asking fervently in chat, like, oh my God, is the snake a pet? And no, uh, yeah, so I saw in chat also, yeah, the, I mean, sorry, I'm just reading chat a little bit right now. Uh, questions in from chat and then... Uh, uh, you know, I look forward to answering all of your lovely questions and concerns. I know that change is scary. Um, but we don't do things without good reasons. Just keep that in mind.